Hello, uh, this video is to talk about uh, pitch and uh, linking the uh, sort of elements of key signatures and scales that you were doing in your theory classes um, to your string playing um, and, and sort of how you can relate them to the scale practice that you're doing um, and how they're very useful for improvisation and that's why we need to learn the theory because then uh, we have the tools to be able to sort of play with music and, and um, have those things at our fingertips. So a quick recap of what we did last time in the treble and the bass clef and I did promise, poor viola players, sorry, I didn't include your clef. So today we're going to include um, the viola clef and even those of you that don't play the viola, um, it will be useful for you to sort of understand where the viola clef sits in relation to the treble clef and the bass clef. Um, not only because you'll need it for grade five theory, um, but also just because it is, I think, extremely interesting. Right, okay. So, uh, treble clef. Remember, the other name for the treble clef is um, the G clef. So, if you look at a curly G, yeah, and imagine that this line of the G was lined up here with the second line up of our top of our stave, okay? So the treble clef is basically a really ornate curly way of drawing a G. So we start the dot on the second line up and we go up to the line above, round, draw a circle, okay? Within those two lines and then we go up and then we try and aim to come down through the middle and round, okay? So do you see how the two letters and the shape are quite similar? So that is like a big arrow saying this second lined up is a G. So bass clef, otherwise known as the F clef. So imagine a sort of curly, ornate F, a bit like that, okay? And we're zoning in on that line there. Um, so we're going to put a little dot on the second line down and we're going to do like one side of a heart shape and we do either a dot either side to really show that that line there is an F. Now, I don't know, that sort of, I sort of feel like in my head that a curly ornate F sort of looks a bit like an F clef, maybe? All right, fine. Um, but just so that we're not Gonna get confused. F. Second line down, and that clef is basically acting as an arrow to tell you that that is what that line means. Um, so now, remember, we said in between the treble clef and the bass clef, we had this imaginary ledger line that a lot of us, if we've learnt the piano, will recognise as where middle C lives. Okay, that is exactly in between the treble clef and the bass clef. So I've drawn it in as a sort of dotted imaginary line so that when we get here, it is that um, C line that becomes the middle line of the viola clef, which is called the C clef, okay? Um, so we have this very ornate little sort of figure here. And look, it's got an arrow sort of built in, hasn't it? Yeah, so that arrow is pointing to where the C is. And that happens to be bang in the middle, and it is middle C, okay? So that is how the alto clef, or the, the viola clef, flips, fits in. It uses the top, bot, bottom two um, lines of the treble clef, and the top two lines of the bass clef, it adds in the imaginary middle C, and that's where it sits, okay? Um, which makes sense, really, because if you think about the cello's got all the low, um, the lower notes, and then um, the violin and the viola share the G string, the D string and the A string, but the, the viola has lower notes than the C string, which need to come into sort of the cello's range. Um, and it's missing out the E string register, so it, um, so it doesn't have these ones. And remember, each clef has five lines because that is the easiest for our um, eyes to read. If we had six or seven lines, it just gets really confusing. Um, and so that's why we have to have the different clefs for the different pitches that the instrument's playing. Okay, that's clefs, done, tick. So then we went on to C major, and we were talking about the patterns that every major, major scale has. So we have one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes. And we know that three and four and seven and eight are close. So we have tone, tone, and then semitone. The close ones are semitones apart. Tone, 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 semitone. Okay. And if we have a do, do, re, mi, fa, mi and fa are close together. So, la, ti, do, ti and do are close together. Okay. If we then transfer that onto the piano, uh, the pattern for C major works fine on the piano because it is just the white notes. So, C, D, E. Oops, got those the wrong way around. D, D, E. F. G. A. B. C. Um, and what you'll notice is three and four and seven and eight are naturally close on the piano, so we can play the scale by just using all the white notes. Simple, done, key signatures, we don't need to put any sharps and flats. Okay, um, so we looked at how to play those on our instruments last time. We're not going to do that again. We're just going to plow on with a bit more theory and then we will get to some playing, I promise. Um, so now we need to um, look at how um, one of the next keys that we look at in um, our theory lesson links in. So for string players, the sharp keys tend to be the ones that we learn first and feel sort of more natural on our instruments. So um, let's now transpose that exact pattern um, onto the keyboard, but we're going to start with G as our number one note. So G is our DO, so if we put G, number one, DO, number two, RE is our A, number three, MI is our B, number four, close, FA is our C. Now oh, notice how we've managed to stay on all the white notes so far and the pattern of the white notes is still helping us. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Now, six and seven have got a gap. So if I stayed on the white notes, I would not be keeping up with this pattern that I've got here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need to hit a black note. Eight. Okay, now if you're not a pianist, the concept of black notes um, and white notes is a bit weird. Um, and so when you're told that a certain note on your string is an F sharp, not an F, it all seems a bit odd. Whereas a pianist actually has to sort of play a different coloured note, so it feels sort of a bit more visceral for them. So this note here that we've written in here, we're going to call an F sharp. Now it has another name, which could be a G flat. So it's a bit like I have lots of names. My name is Mummy. My name is Becca. My name can be Mrs. Francis. Now, I can be called lots of different things in different um, places. At home, I'm Mummy. At Academy, I'm Becca. At school, I'm Mrs. Francis. Now, in G major, this note becomes F sharp. So I'm going to write that in. F sharp. And we're not playing this note. Because in any scale, you have you can only have one letter of the alphabet once. So we've got G, um, as in, you'll see what I mean. G, A, B, C, D, E. Now if we called this G flat, it would have to be G flat G. And that wouldn't make any sense. So we have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now in another scale, where we haven't got a G natural, um, we need to make a G flat, we haven't got a G, but we do have an F, then it would be called G flat. So it just depends which scale it's in as to what its name is. But for the moment, we're calling it F sharp. So our scale for G major is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Semitone, semitone. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the keyboard. And then we're gonna think about how we're going to put it onto our instruments. But before we do that, we need to work out how we can draw them um, as a um, key signature, okay? So remember, we've got G here. Now we could 
write a sharp in the space below this G line, um, but tradition dictates that that's not where we're going to put it. Okay, so we're going to go right up to the top, so it's out of the way. So we have G is this line, let's count up, A, B, C, D, E, F. The top line is our F, so we draw like a hashtag with the middle of the hashtag with the line going through it. That is a sign for G sharp major if you're a treble clef instrument. Okay, so every time you see an F, you're going to play F sharp. Quite easy for the cellos and the bass clef because we've got our F line already signed posted for us really big. So again, we're going to do a hashtag sign with the middle of the hashtag with the line going through it. Okay, for the violas, we know that this is C, so we're going to count up D, E, F. So for the violas, the F is in this top space here. So we're going to put our hashtag through there. So that is a G major, the key of G major sign for all of our instruments. Now, we were talking about tonic triads. Now, remember I said tonic is your happy place. It's your home. It's where you feel calm and relaxed and sort of centered. So the first note of the scale is our, is our happy place. Okay, so that's our tonic. And so a tonic triad, three notes, triangle, tricycle, triad, is um, a group of three notes that makes um, a little chord based on the first note of the scale, tonic triad. So we've got G major, G is our tonic. So let's go for, well, yes, we're gonna do, we're gonna do, um, yeah, let's do, we're going to do the cellos. So we've got, this is our F. So we've got a G here. And then we have to make a little snowman. So G, we have got number one. And then we need note number three, which is going to be a B. And then we need note number five. So we're looking for G, B, and a D. Okay. Um, for our tonic triangle triad and they need to stack up like a little snowman. So we've got our G in the top space here, B sits on the line and we've run out of lines in our bass clef so we do a, a little ledger line here and that creates the D. Now that D is the same D that sits underneath the treble clef here. All right so um, when, when you see um, a ledger line with a note sitting on top of it in the in the bass clef it's actually the same d that is sitting there and there in the treble clef okay um i'm drawing these all in purple because they are at the same pitch the ones for the, the violins gets a bit confusing because we're used to what we're going to start on our open g right down there with two ledger lines um and you notice how we've gone into the bass clef so our open G with our two ledger lines actually is the same G that the chair is playing there. So we've got G, B with one ledger line and D that sits just below the stave. And then if we translate this into the viola clef, we've got open G, B and D. So do you see how the violins could be playing this chord, the cellos could be playing this chord, and the violas could be playing these ones, and all of us will be playing at exactly the same pitch. So this is the bit of the stave that we all share. Now I'm going to use a different, um, a different uh, colour um, to show the other options that you have. So the cellos could also go a lot lower. This one's a bit awkward to play because you have to use fourth finger, uh, first finger, fourth finger. To play this one so actually the easiest tonic triad for them to play would be the one right at the bottom of the stave so if this is our f we're going to count it down e d c e a g so the g is here make a little snowman g b d um and another one that the violins could play is an octave higher so we could start here G, 
because we know it's G because it's the second one up. B, D. Here we go. Um, so let's just show those on our instruments. Um, and, oh, sorry, violas. There's another one you guys can do. So violas can play this one too, but they're going to need some ledger lines. So they start here, give them a ledger line, and give another ledger line. And those ledger lines correspond to these lines here. Yeah? G, E, D. So whilst this looks quite confusing as a really big diagram, hopefully if you stayed with me step by step, you can understand that um, I'm just showing you how the notes that we play and the clefts that we read aren't just in a little bubble. Um, they actually all fit together and we share notes with each other, the cellos, the violas, um, the violins, and our clefts are sort of designed to capture the notes that we play most often, okay? Um, so let's just simplify this a little bit. Um, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna start with violins. Okay, so violins, we're gonna do open G, B, second finger on the G, and D. So, G, B, D. Okay, so that is a tonic triad on G using our open strings. Violas, you can do exactly the same. Open G, second finger, open D. Okay, that's the most simple one. The next step up that the violins can do is putting a third finger on the D string. Now, when we want to tune that third finger on the D string, make sure you find the harmonic. Melt in. That's our G. First finger on the A string. And third finger on the D string. Check it with your open string to make sure you're in tune. Okay, so G. B, first finger on the A string. D. So that is this one here. And violas, you can do exactly the same. Third finger on the D string. B, first finger on the A string. D, third finger on the A string. So violas and violins share the ones that they can play. All right. Now cellos have a two, another two options. You can share this purple one that the other groups are playing. They get to play it with their open strings and you have to play it on your D string. So if we play our D string and then we find our harmonic with our fourth finger and then we melt into the string. So we've got a fourth finger on the D string and then we have a first finger on the A string and then we have a fourth finger on the A string. Okay, so those notes, the pitch of them, are exactly the same as the open string uh, notes of the violins and the um, violas. And then you've also got an open string option, which is the octave below. So that's these notes, G, B and D. Okay, so we've got G. Oh, it's hard playing on my knee. And then three fingers. And then open D. So when we're doing the improvising, you can use any of these notes. So cellos, you could go G, B, D, and they go up the octave, G, B, D. Yeah, so you could use all six notes. Violins, you could do the same, G, B, D, G, B, D. Violas, you could do the same. If you're feeling not so confident, you could just use your open string. Um, one, so open G, two fingers on the B, open D. Um, cellos, you could do the same. Yeah, so that's the more sort of simple version. And then as you're feeling more confident, start going higher up your instrument and start experimenting using two octaves at a time. Okay, right. Awful lot of theory to take in. If you didn't understand some of that, watch it through, have a think. 
ask a bigger sibling if you're confused, ask a parent if you're confused, watch it again, maybe it will click the second time. And if there are really things that you don't understand, then you can ask your teacher in your theory lesson um, or your oral lesson, or you can just ping me an email um, and I can go over some of that again. Right, let's do some playing. So we've got um, three rhythms from our rhythm section. We're in three, four time, so it has a slightly different feel. Boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick. We're gonna do it three times. The first time I'm gonna play section one, section two, section three, section four. I'm doing each section four times. So we end up with a 16 bar sort of piece. First time, I'm just going to use G for the first rhythm, B for the second rhythm, and D for the third rhythm, and then back to G for the fourth rhythm, okay? I'm using one note per rhythm, and I'm just switching through the tonic triad, okay? Um, as before, you don't start at rhythm number one. I'd like you to start on a different rhythm, but you can just pick one of these notes per rhythm um, to just keep it really simple or you could stay on a G the whole way through okay if that's what you want to do so you pick your level but I'm going to keep it simple this time all right um, so let's stand here so that you can um, see the rhythms and actually I'm going to sit down so that you can see the staves and you can work out which set of notes it is that you want to play so we're going to go nice and steady and I'm gonna say boom, chick, chick, and then um, off we go. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna get work through the rhythms. Okay, are you ready? So boom, chick, chick, off we go. <laughs> playing through you can start to feel when you've sort of done one bar and a second bar and a third bar and a fourth bar and then change onto your next rhythm so you should be sort of as you're playing what you're playing your brain should be sort of thinking ahead you have a little pocket of your brain sort of doing the checks and balances making sure that everything is going okay you know where you are and you know what's coming next okay so you can stick now with just doing a rhythm pattern on a G, choose one, do it for four beats, four bars, choose, choose another one, do it for four bars. Um, just using one note per pattern. I'm now going to swap to using two notes per pattern. I'm not going to decide beforehand which two notes. I'm not going to decide beforehand whether they're going to be low octave or high octave. I just know that those are the notes that are in my palette that I can choose. I know that these are the rhythms I'm gonna have to work through. Um, and I know that I'm only going to do two notes per rhythmic pattern, okay? Um, I might muck around with which order they come in, um, but I'm just gonna choose two notes per rhythmic pattern, okay? So you can stick really simple, you can do the same as me, or you can sort of be more advanced straight away if you want to. Okay, are we ready? So, boom, chick, chick, off we go. <laughs>
so that was a little bit more complicated if you're sticking on just the open strings hopefully the different notes that I'm playing will help create some harmonies with what you're doing so that will sound nice um, and now I'm going to go up to a third level where I can use a G, a B and a D on every rhythm pattern um, and I'm going to try and keep my patterns the same. So once I've done it, I'm going to try and repeat it four times and then go into the next thing. But as I said, I'm not, I'm going to use all of these six notes and I'm not going to plan it beforehand. It's just sort of going to see what happens and then sort of go with it and fix it as it goes through. So you can stick with one note per rhythmic pattern. You can move to doing two notes per rhythmic pattern. If you've had a listen to what I've just done, maybe listen to it back and see how that sounds. Or you, you can come with me and do um, three notes per rhythmic pattern, but keep it the same for the four times through. Um, and then next time we're gonna do it once more after this, where we're gonna have a free for all, we can do whatever we want. Um, but as I say, you just pick your level. All right, so you so you know what we're doing. All right, so boom, chick, chick, off we go. barking it distracted me sorry I bet you were better than me at that one okay now free for all last one we're going to you can I'm doing the rhythms in order you can do them in any order you want but you do each one four times so you might do four four times two four times three four times one four times okay um, you don't have to stick to the same pattern um, each time it goes through and you can play any notes you want from these arpeggio patterns, okay? So you can play through your open string up to the high notes, okay? And go for it. I'm gonna do the same. I will see you at the end. Um, good luck. If you don't want to do it that complicated, remember we've gone through lots of different levels, so you can stick with the level that you feel confident with and it will still sound fantastic. All right, this is the last time we're going to go through today. So, boom, chick. Chick, off we go. <laughs> pretty nice um, it will be really nice to play with you all when we get back together again but this will give us some feeling of that sort of ensemble for the time being well done for concentrating do not worry if this is a bit of a brain overload at the moment the main things to, to sort of know for your grade one theory things if you're not a viola player um, I'm gonna take this off here okay and I'm going to take these bits off here. Aww. How to draw a tonic triad and where to put the F sharp and the meaning of your F clef and your G clef and how to work out a G major scale on the keyboard using 
the tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So those are the simple bits of information. Um, we went a bit more complicated today because I wanted to sort of show you how your string instruments fit together in the logic of the clefs. All right, see you later.